all rise. Veuillez vous lever. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. We're in open session, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Alekendra, do we go back into private? We can continue open session. We continue in open session, all right. May I proceed? <coughs> Madam, I'm going to move now to another topic. Madam, am I correct that the first commission to look into the events surrounding the 2007 elections was a commission called the Kriegler Commission. Do you recall that? Yes. And for the record, Kriegler is spelled K-R-I-E-G-L-E-R. And, Madam, you'll agree with me that this commission, the Kriegler Commission, was established in February 2008. Am I right? Yes. It was established days after the violence in Naivasha and Nakuru. Am I right? Yes. And Madam, the Kriegler Commission, the commissioners came to Eldoret in July of 2008, more specifically, 7th of July, 2008. Am I right? Yes. And there was a session they held at the Eldoret Municipal Hall Am I right? Yes. Madam, you will recall that there was an incident at that session where a PNU official by the name of William Rono raised concerns about the tallying of the results in relation to the seat of Madam Jane Wangoi at the market ward. Do you recall that incident? No. Do you recall, Madam, that William Rono addressed the Kriegler commissioners and he was trying to tell them that in fact it was not the ODM candidate, William Kiptum, that had won the elections for the market ward seat, seat, but in fact, it was actually Jane Wangoi. Do you remember that incident? No. And for the record, William Kiptum is K-I-P-T-U-M. But, Madam, you recall that William Kiptum was contesting that seat? Yes. Madam, do you recall that when Mr. William Rono addressed the Commission, he was booed by ODM supporters in the audience, and that was televised on TV? Do you remember that incident? No. Do you recall that William Rono 
was removed from that premises under police security because the ODM supporters were going to attack him. Do you remember the incident? No. And Madam, the next commission that came to Elderet after the Kriegler was the Waki Commission. Am I right? Yes. And the Waki Commissioners came to Elderet and witnesses testified on 5th and 6th August. Am I right? Yes. But a few days before the commissioners started to hear testimony, a group of lawyers came from Nairobi to Eldoret to meet with witnesses and to take statements from witnesses. Am I right? And to call of that. You don't recall, madam, that some lawyers came to Eldoret in advance of the commissioners, perhaps around the 2nd, 3rd, or even the 4th of August, to meet with witnesses and take statements. What you're trying to mean is the Waki Commission lawyers. Exactly. That's what yes. I mean. So you agree with me that these lawyers came in advance of the commissioners, the Waki Commission lawyers? Yes. And am I right, madam, that amongst these lawyers were Mr. Kamodo Waiganjo? Am I right? Can't you call him? And for the record, it's K A M O T H O Y Ganjo W A I G A N G O. Another lawyer that came, madam, was Jenga Muwangi. Am I right? I like him to call him. And another lawyer that came was called Mr. Peter Maundu. Do you recall him? No. Maundu is spelled M A U N D U. <coughs> another lawyer that came was by the name of George Morara. Do you recall? Yes. Now, madam, this group of lawyers who Mr. Morara was together with, would you agree with me that they were in some way associated to the PNU? Yes. Now, Madam, at this time, in 2008, am I right that Honorable Martha Karua, she was the Minister of Justice? Am I right? Yes. And I'm also right, am I not, Madam, that Mr. Mutea Iringo was the Deputy Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Provincial Administration and Internal Security. Am I right? Only I can tell. And for the record, Mutea Iringo is spelled M U 
T E A and Iringo is I R I N G O. Do you know? Um, you may also need to spell Masa Karua. Your Honours, I believe I spelled that earlier, but I will do so again. Well, you may have done, but the transcript seems to be struggling with it. Martha Karuva is spelled K-A-R-U-A. <coughs> Madam, you may not be familiar with the position he holds, but have you heard of an individual by the name of Mutea Iringo. No. He's a government official. He was at that time and he still is. No. In fact, he is presently the permanent secretary for the Ministry of Internal Security. Does that mean anything to you? No. And madam, at that time also, you will agree with me that madam Nancy Gitao was the director of political affairs in the office of the president. <coughs> and Gitao is spelled G-I-T-A-U. Am I right, madam? I can't recall. But do you know the person I'm speaking about? Madam Nancy Gittell? No. Now, madam, you will agree with me that what was happening at the time was the ODM was very eager to show that the PNU had rigged the elections. You agree with that? No. So you don't agree that the ODM was insisting that PNU, you have rigged the elections. That is how Mwai Kibaki is the president. Isn't that what ODM was saying at that time? I'm objecting, Your Honor. That question was asked already, and it was answered clearly by the witness. Objection <coughs> is overruled. Objection overruled. Witness can answer. Yes, the ODM was saying so. Thank you, Madam. And, Madam, in the same way, am I right that the PNU was saying that you, the ODM, you are the cause of the post-election violence. Um, you mean that was what PNU. The, o the PNU was saying to the ODM yes, Your Honor. and not saying to the witness? No, okay. no. Absolutely not, madam. I'm, I'm not saying that. You agree with that? Yes. And Madam, in order for the PNU to be able to demonstrate what they were saying, that the ODM was involved in the violence, they put together a group to now start identifying witnesses and to gather information to show that it was the ODM that was behind the violence. Am I right? Can you repeat the question? You agreed with me that the PNU was saying that the ODM, not you, the ODM was the cause of the post-election violence. Yes. And in order to show that it was the ODM that was the cause of the violence, 
what the PNU officials and also some government officials did was they put together a group of people who would assist them to locate witnesses who could provide evidence to support what they were saying that ODM was the cause of the violence. You agree with that? I cannot agree. I think the question was quite complicated even for me to follow. Can I try again, Your Honor? You can, but if you can simplify it. Madam, the PNU was trying to gather evidence to show that what they were saying is right, that it was the ODM that had caused the violence. Am I right? No. And there was a group of people that came together to assist in gathering this evidence and to identify witnesses to show the ODM was involved in the violence. Do you agree? No. And Madam, when you say no, you don't agree or you don't know? I don't agree to what you're saying. And Madam, am I right that this group was comprised of some PNU officials, some government officials, and some lawyers? But she disagrees with the premise of the question. Can you bring in the conclusion then? Your Honor, if I may, I am also attempting to put my case, Your Honor, and the witness is free to disagree. But you, you can put your case, but um, what I'm saying is if your case is based on a premise that the witness um, does not agree with, do you ask the question from the perspective of a conclusion that is necessarily based on the premise that a witness disagrees with? Or do you formulate your conclusion as a separate matter? That's all. I'm not trying to stop you from putting your case. Jonas, I'll move on from this issue. But what I also noticed in some of my earlier questionings is that with some further information being provided, the witness is able to at times recall the proposition that was put in the first place. Like, for example, the event in Kisi when Mr. Ruta was attacked. The difficulty there was that uh, in this instance, you had asked her whether is a matter of her not recalling or not, or whether it, it is that she uh, did not agree. And she said she did not agree. So in the previous instances, it might have been a matter of not recalling, which she then subsequently recalled. You know, perhaps I'll move specifically to the North Rift issues. Fair enough. And the witness may recall. Madam, now in relation to the violence that took place in the North Rift, are you aware that there was a group of individuals comprising Mr. Stephen Tarus, Martha Karua, Mutea Iringo, Nancy Kital, 
Stephen Mugwira, Abraham Lemo, William Rono, and Beth Ruto that were working together to identify witnesses and collect information to present to the Waki. Are you aware of that? No. Madam, did you hear that some of the witnesses that testified before the Waki Commission in relation to the violence that took place in the North Rift were later taken into a witness protection program that was managed by the Ministry of Internal Security. Did you hear about that? No. Madam, did you hear that for witnesses who or rather for some witnesses who testified or gave a statement to the Waki Commission, the monies for witness protection that was being run by the Ministry of Internal Security was being dispersed by Mr. Mutea Iringo and Nancy Gital. Did you hear that? No. Madam, can you lean forward a bit? You can, you can move your chair forward a bit so that you're closer to the microphone. Thank you. And Madam, did you hear that the aim of some PNU officials and some government officials was to blame Mr. Ruto for the violence? and I'm talking about before the Waki Commission. That is what they wanted to do. Are you aware of that? Yes. And they wanted to blame Mr. Ruto, madam, regardless of the truth. I'm right, aren't I? Yes. And what they wanted, madam, was to say William Ruto was responsible for that post-election violence in North Rift Valley even though he had nothing to do with it. I'm right, aren't I? Yes. Madam, I'm going to move to another, another topic. And, Madam, you, you recall the date, 2nd January. Now, please just say yes or no. Don't say where you were or what you were doing. You recall that date, 2nd January, don't you? Yes. Madam, do you recall either hearing or seeing on TV Mr. Ruto calling for peace? and telling people to stop looting, to stop burning, and to stop killing. Do you recall? Yes. And Madam, you also recall, don't you, that the first time Mr. William Ruto returned to Eldoret since the elections was on 27th of January 2008. You recall? That one I can't. Sorry. And if it helps, Madam, 27th January was a Sunday. But perhaps I'll describe the visit to you and you can see if you remember hearing about it or seeing it on TV, perhaps. Okay? Okay. Now, Madam, during this visit, Mr. Ruto joined worshippers at the Eldoret AIC Church to pray for peace. Do you remember such an event? Yeah, yes. And you recall 
that from here, Mr. Ruto proceeded to the Moy Referral Hospital. And he went there to visit victims of the post-election violence. You recall? Yes. And you recall, madam, that the victims he was visiting were there nursing injuries from bullets and arrows. Am I right, madam? The victims, shall I repeat the question? You might as well. What I'm saying is that the victims who were at the Moy Referral Hospital at this time were victims who had been injured during the post-election violence. They had been cut by pangas, they had bullet wounds, they had arrow wounds, burns. Am I right? Yes. And those victims, madam, according to you, those with arrow wounds, they were Kikuyus, mostly. Yes? Yes. And madam, you'll also recall that during this visit, Mr. Ruto, he spent time there and he was talking to these victims and they were explaining to him what had happened to them and how they lost their property. You recall? Because I was not there, you cannot tell. Maybe you would have heard about it? All I heard is he was in the hospital. And after, and in fact, madam, am I right that what you heard was that the victims were very happy to receive Mr. Ruto. They spoke to him and they told him what had happened and he sympathized with them. Correct? That's what you heard. I can say of that. I might you remember that on this occasion, Mr. Ruto also addressed the press and he called for peace and for the violence and killings to stop. Do you recall that happened? Yes. Madam, I am right, am I not, that when Mr. Ruto was attending public places, especially during the campaigns and during anything associated with the post-election violence, that the places he went to, there was always quite a number of press who were interested and who would be present. Am I right? Yes. Jonas, if I may make a request, during the uh, opening, the defense, we played a video of this visit I'm referring to, but it was not included in our list of evidence that we provided to the prosecution. So I wonder if my learned friend would object strenuously to me playing that video for this witness on this occasion. We, could we possibly have some information on what the video is about? What is the content? Your Honor, I believe my learned friend was at the opening and he may not <coughs> recall the event I'm speaking about, but I'd rather not describe it before the witness sees it. Why did you not um, point the prosecutor to it this time? Was it inadvertence? To be very sincere, honest, this is a line of questioning which is almost impromptu. And it was not inadvertence and definitely not deliberate, Your Honor. 
Your Honor, uh, we haven't objected for, I mean, there's a certain line of questioning from defense counsel that is bordering on self-serving evidence. Uh, I'm not going to get into it in front of the witness, but it certainly is possibly within the scope of self-serving evidence, and I don't think that type of evidence should be led or tried to be elicited through one of the prosecution witnesses. So I'd object on that grounds that that video be played. Your Honor, if I may, one minute. Just to move things faster, Your Honor, so that Madam Witness can go home sooner, I think I will, I will avoid the video. I'll proceed without it, Your Honor. Fair enough. Um, Mr. Garcia, there was an admonition I gave to Mr. Ken at some point. It applies to you, too. Um, it does not help the proceedings if counsel sit down and don't make an objection and after a while they get up and say there have been a series of questions asked we didn't object so we've been good guys all along that doesn't help us if questions if objectionable questions are posed counsel who have objections and think it's appropriate to make the objections must make it then and the ruling is made and we move forward Please proceed. Yes, I do apologize, but Mr. Khan has asked me to convey that he has taken that munition to heart. Sometimes we have to be hard, but proceed. Madam, yesterday you described to the court, a visit by Mr. Luther <coughs> to the Eldred showground. You recall? Yes. And you say he was received harshly. And you said people at the showground called Mr. Ruto all sorts of names, including murderer. And they tried to throw things at him. And you said, you were asked what was the reason for this reaction. And you said, they blamed Mr. Ruto for the violence. Do you recall that, madam? Yes. Madam, I know you were not asked by my learned friend about the date of this visit. But we are interested in this, madam. And what I'm going to say to you is that this visit you are referring to took place in April 2008. Am I correct? I don't recall the dates. Would you recall whether it was in the early part of 2008 or in the later part or in the middle? If you can try to see if you can give us some estimation of when this is taking place. It's an early. Early? Yeah, but not second and third, maybe from fourth, fifth, maybe sixth month. So like April, May, June? Yeah. Thank you. And Madam, you told the court yesterday that you did not recall if anyone came with Mr. Ruto. In fact, when you asked that question, you said, I can't tell. Do you remember? Yes. And Madam, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm right, aren't I, that the reason you can't tell, Madam, was because you were not yourself present during the visit, and the information you provided was perhaps what you were told by others about the visit. Could that be right, madam? No. Madam, I'm going to play you a short video, and I hope that will help refresh your memory. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> Your Honours, may I ask that 
the video Ken D09 0022 0018 Be played please and you honor for the assistance of the chamber a tab 10 is a transcript of the video and for my learned friends it's Ken D09 0022 0019 Court officer please please the video The first leg and President Mwai Kibaki and Prime Minister Raila Odinga led nine ministers in breaking the ice regarding the tricky issue of resettlement. They toured the IDP camp at the Eldred showground where there are about 15,000 displaced persons. Rift Valley province was the most affected following the post-election crisis. Elder at North MP William Ruto, who is also Minister for Agriculture, set the tempo by expressing the resolve for unity. However, Ruto condemned the arrest of people he said were being witch hunted. Tunauliza kama kuna mashtaka kama haya. Yenye kudhaniwa hakuna ushahidi. Hawa watu waachiliwe waende nyumbani waanze kufanya ukulima. Tumechukua hatua Mheshimiwa Rais na nashukuru kwa sababu ya usaidizi wako na usaidizi wa Waziri Mkuu National Cereals and Produce Board sasa itauza mbolea ya CN kwa shilingi 1650. Nataka wale wa Kenya kutoka bandile waje pamoja tuseme pamoja. Tuzungumuze pamoja. Kati ni mambo ya ardhi ya mambo ya shamba tuzungumuze pamoja ili suluhishe patikani ya kudumu The reception was hostile for Vice President Kalonzo Musyoka There was also a protocol hitch as Prime Minister Raila Odinga skipped Kalonzo introducing the President instead Nivuayangu sasa kualika Rais Ojamhuri wa Kenya mashimia mwai kibaki aje asembe na nyini Makofi. Makofi tena. But Kalonzo went ahead to address the gathering before introducing the president. Na kwa hivyo hata ambao wanaondoka ninawashukuru kwa sababu wameonyesha wazi kwamba kuna shida hapa. Then the president sought to cool them down. Na vile vile bwana Raila Odinga amesema na sisi tumekubaliana hiyo lazima dio kwani wewe umefunajifanya mkubwa sana dio umefanya kazi gani I, I tell you raia hawa ni wale Mungu alisema tuwasamehe and the peace message was the rallying call ukanisikia ninalima pale na chamba hilo nilinunua kwa baba baba alinunua kwa fulani wewe uanze kuniambia hapo zio kwetu utaniambia kwetu wapi in a nutshell the leaders did not delve directly into the issue of resettlement rather choosing to stick to the issue of unity and insisting that they are in one government and that after the launch of the peace rally in Eldred, the same will spread to other parts of the country. Madam, you will agree with me that that place where this event is taking place is the Kipchoge Kano Stadium in Eldred. Do you agree with that? Yes. And you will agree with me, madam, that on this day, as the newsreader was explaining, the group that you saw 
President Waikibaki, Raila Odinga, Honorable George Saitoti, and Mr. William Ruto, they first toured the IDP camp at the Eldred Showground, and then they moved to Kipchoge Kano Stadium. Is that an accurate description? But I think from the shooting, the video was shot after the reconciliation, but I was talking before the conciliation between the two groups. I'm sorry, could you explain that to me again, madam? What I'm trying to say is, mm -hmm. according to the video that you've shown me, these events happened after the reconciliation of the two groups. So you're saying this event took place after the Eldred showground? No, the showground was still there, but it's after the reconciliation between the PNU and ODM. Are you placing it in terms of time, when, yeah. when it happened? No. Are you saying it happened at a particular time? That, yes. That is after reconciliation? Yes, after the reconciliation. And that is the first time, madam, that William Ruta visited the Eldred showground. What is the first time? This visit that I've just played on the video. This, we say, madam, was the first time that Mr. Ruto went to visit the Eldred showground, after which the whole entourage move, moved to keep Choge Kano Stadium in Eldred. Would you agree with me? No. Now, Madam, what I would like to also put to you is that you are correct that there was a trip when Mr. Ruto came to the area and where he visited the IDPs and Eldred showground. You're correct. You are also correct that there was an incident where IDPs were reacting to their guests negatively. But where I say you're mistaken, madam, is that the place where the IDPs had this harsh reaction was in fact the Kipchoge Kano Stadium, and the guests who were being booed and heckled were in fact President Kibaki and Kalonzo Musioka, as you saw in that video, and not Mr. Ruto, madam. Do you think you're mistaken? No. But in that video that you saw, madam, will you agree that the people present are IDPs? It can be mixed. When you say mixed, madam, what do you mean? You said the meeting was in Kipchoge. So it's mixed. Those who are affected and those who are not affected. And those who are affected, that you could see, are you able to tell which communities they were? No. Would you accept? that many of them were from the Kikuyu community? Yes. And you will also accept from what you saw that when Mr. Ruto was speaking to them, there was no harsh reaction. Do you accept that? In the video it says Madam, do you recall that um, let, let's let's um get this did the witness say in the video I would say yes or did she say from the video 
I would say yes. Witness, what was your answer? Yes. Um, you ask the question again. Madam, I asked you that you will also accept that what you were seeing on the video is in April 2008. Mr. Ruto is there with Waikibaki, Kalonzo Musioka, Raila Odinga. He's addressing people who include Kikuyu IDPs. Ms. Ms. Alagandra, I think you're doing more than is required. Let me ask the question. Um, witness, the lawyer had asked you that would you accept from what you saw in the video that when Mr. Ruto was speaking, there was no harsh reaction? Do you accept that? Yes, I do. Thank you. Jonas, can I ask that the witness be shown Ken D09-0022, dash 0022. It's a tab 11, Your Honor. Um, can we see that on the screen? Madam, can you see your screen? What's on the screen? Yes. And Madam, the visit that you saw on the video, this was the news the next day describing that visit. And the reason I show this to you, Madam, is for you to just have a look at the top and to confirm the date written up there. Am I correct that the news article, or the, that was the newspaper for the date, April 25th, 2008? Yes. Thank you, madam. Madam, do you recall that in 2010, Mr. Ruto visited the Eldred showground again. No. Did you hear about this visit? Yes. And did you hear that he was received well and he spoke to the IDPs? Yes. Madam, I'm going to show you another video and you can confirm if this is the event that I'm referring to when Mr. Ruto visited the Eldred showground in 2010. Okay? Yes. Miss, can I ask that video, Ken D09? 0022-0026, be played please. And to honours, we have provided a transcript at tab 13. And for my learned friends, it's at Ken D09-0022-0027. What seemed like a way to prepare the ground ahead of today's IDP resettlement process by the government, these MPs from Rift Valley, which host most of the internally displaced persons, visited the area with one message that of coexistence and forgiveness. <laughs> Tunataka 
sio walazima mpango ambao tutakubaliana serikali wakaaji wa hapa na nyinyi na kila mmoja wale wa kanisa wale wa viongozi wa mashinani sisi wa bunge na serikali ili kila mtu arudi mahali pake Ruto urge the residents to assist the IDPs to restart their lives after their resettlement. Serikali imeweka askari. Serikali imejenga police station. Lakini nawaambia ndugu zangu amani ya kweli ni kati ya jirani na mwenzake. Bunduki na police station haiwezi kusaidia kama jirani na ndugu yake hawajaketi chini na kukubaliana He reiterated the government's promise to provide the IDPs with land inputs and a cash token to assist in reconstruction of their burnt houses Na yule ambaye anatoka hapa kwa kampi ameenda kwa shamba yake na jirani yake wamezungumza na mambo yako mzuri anapata Council, why are we watching this video? Um, let me tell you where I'm going. Um, is this still events around April 2008, according to you? John, this is in fact the second and last time <coughs> Mr. Ruto visited the Eldred showground and this depicts the manner in which he was received by the IDPs in that when, when? 2010 your honor 2010 even later why are we watching videos of what happened in 2010 what is the relevance of that to the charge your honor the relevance we say is there's a lot being said about the reactions of Kikuyus and PNU supporters to Mr. Ruto and this is another situation where people are still in camps and this is how they were receiving him your honor not very much more different from the way they did in April 2008 and it may also assist the witnesses recollection of what she says she heard about Mr. Ruto's visit to the Eldred showground in 2010 the worries about spending time on matters that are not directly relevant to the charge. Uh, we can't be playing videos like this. Jonas, we are faced with a situation where there's allegations being made that Mr. Ruto was being called a murderer by this same IDPs that were in that same location. And there's two occasions when Mr. Ruto went there. It was the same IDPs who were there. And this just demonstrates that this is the way in which they welcomed Mr. Ruto. They did not call him a murderer and they did not throw anything at him. Proceed. Your Honor, if I may. On this ma on the same subject, when you look at the uh, translation at Ken D09002200027, and you look at lines four and lines fourteen, now my main concern is that from what defense counsel is saying is this is relevant as to how the IDPs would have received the. Mr. Ruto at the time, but when you look at those specific lines, I'm not so sure that that's, that's clear from the translation as to who is actually uh, at the meeting and who is uh, listening to Mr. Ruto speak. Okay, we can deal with that in submission. We will play the video, but um, Council, uh, let's just be careful what we spend time on in this proceeding. Um, please continue. Uh, how long do we have on the video? Not much longer, Your Honor.
akiwa pesa zake shilingi kiasi fulani uweze uanzie maisha nyumbani ili kila mtu atakapoondoka hapa usiondoke kwa ile mlango ukaifika pale barabarani ukazirai kwa sababu huna chakula He was however quick to correct speculations that the government was going to use force in the resettlement exercise. Hakuna mtu atatolewa hapa lazima. Mtu ataondoka hapa aende nyumbani akiwa katika moyo wake amekubali mimi naenda nyumbani. Lilian Mwendo for Channel 1 News. Madam, do you recall this event? No, because I was not there. Did you hear about it? Yeah. Yes. Yona, perhaps, can I request that we go into a private session, please, Yona? Let's go into a private session, then. 